Last night in UFC 302, Kevin Holland sank in a really tight armbar against Mikhail Olekchechuk. And after he refused to tap, you can see the very moment when his arm started to deform. But was this a dislocation? A fracture? Or both? In this video, I'll break down the biomechanics and the anatomy of this injury and the potential diagnosis that may follow. Okay, so here we're going to use two pictures side by side of different views of the armbar from last night. Uh, for those of you who may not know the biomechanics of the armbar, this should be a good visual. So the first thing we need to do is immobilize the humerus or the upper bone or the bone of the upper arm by controlling the shoulder, which is better seen in the picture on the left. And on the right, we see him controlling the wrist, and this is actually controlling the bones, the radius and the ulna in the forearm. Once you immobilize the forearm and once you mobilize the humerus, there's then an anteriorly directed force with the hips coming through the bottom of the elbow. Typically, this tensions the structures of the elbow and causes you to tap. So typically, that's as far as it gets and then the fight is stopped. But this was not the case last night. The whole crowd and everybody watching at home could see the elbow take a shape that it wasn't supposed to take. Here's what happens anatomically when that occurs. Okay, so in order to understand what I'm thinking for this injury, I really want you to know a couple of structures here. The first one I want you to know is the articular capsule. Okay, we'll talk about that one in a second. The second is the humerus. The third is the radius. The fourth is the ulna. And then the fifth is the UCL. You guys have probably heard that one before. Okay, so we'll start with the capsule. We're gonna back up a little bit because I want you to be able to visualize whenever this bone is stabilized, the humerus, whenever these two bones are stabilized or immobilized, the radius and the ulna, whenever there's a force that directed upward, it causes a hyperextension movement. And you can note, you can visualize that whenever that happens, this part of the, the joint capsule that actually surrounds the entire joint is going to be put on a very high amount of stretch and tension. I would imagine that during this arm bar, this probably incurred a bit of a tear. Okay, so th that would make it a lot easier for those bones to kind of dislocate like we'll talk about a little bit later. So if we actually look beneath here and we swing around, the main joint of the elbow is called the humeral ulnar joint. So we've got the humerus and the ulna articulating to give the shape that allows for the bend of the elbow. We also have the radius that articulates with the humerus in a little bit of a different way. It doesn't actually cup. This radial head particularly just glides along the, the surface of the humerus whenever it bends. So as we zoom out again and we turn around and look and see that shape of the humeral ulnar joint again, imagine taking that and moving it upwards into hyperextension. It's kind of easier to imagine now that the humerus could actually pop out anteriorly. And this is what we talk about whenever we say an anterior elbow dislocation. I'm going to show a picture of an x-ray of an anterior dislocation because it's a little bit easier to see and visualize from there. And now that we've been able to visualize what it looks like whenever the humerus moves anteriorly from its little cup situated here in the ulna, I want you to look closely at this ligament here called the UCL. We mentioned it a little bit earlier. This is a ligament that's meant to check or prevent excessive valgus movement. And if we go back, we can actually see that Kevin Holland was putting his arm in, a, in more of a valgus uh, moment after he had hyperextended it to try and get him to tap in different ways. So whenever he kind of turned into that valgus moment, he was actually tensioning this ligament here. Whenever we saw the, the elbow change shape, we were actually seeing this part of the humerus, this little part, I'm gonna hide this. We were seeing this part of the humerus pop out, the epicondyle and the condyle of the humerus. That's how we know that the elbow was very likely dislocated whenever we saw that deformation happen in real time. Now, the real question is the likelihood of whether this dislocation also resulted in a fracture of any of the articulating surfaces. I think the likelihood is low, and I'll tell you why. Typically for anterior elbow dislocations, there are two mechanisms, where the arm is planted and when the arm's not planted. When the arm is planted, there's more of a compressive load being put through the elbow joint, increasing the probability of fractures happening to the articulating surfaces. In this injury, his hand wasn't planted on the ground, and the forces were more or less directed through the joint, and not through the shaft of a bone in particular. Now, I'm not saying there's a 0% chance, so it's still on the differential diagnosis list, we'd have to wait for the imaging to come back to know for sure. However, the chance is much lower than if he had fallen with his arms stretched out, for example. So without knowing much of anything other than what I saw from the fight last night, I think the primary diagnosis is just a simple anterior dislocation with concomitant UCL damage. In the absence of fractures, they'll likely immobilize the arm for a few weeks and then start light PT directly after that. But if there is a fracture, they'll immobilize it for at least six to eight weeks to allow the bone to heal, and then they'll start physical therapy. Either way, he's got quite the recovery ahead of him. Let me know if you guys would have tapped like I would have in the comments. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you next time.